Time for your February market update. It's great to now be able to unpack the info from the 2021 census and to make some comparisons to 2011. They only actually began recording mortgage statuses as part of the 1991 census, but the most recent data from 2021 has confirmed that for the first time that the majority of homeowners are actually mortgage free. Worcestershire residents even more so with 35% and Malvern actually have over 40% mortgage free versus England and Wales 33%. The census confirmed that of those households in the UK, 17% are made up of social rent, 20% private rent, 29% of homeowners have a mortgage, and then 33 nationally own outright. We've got more info included in our blog on the website, so if you want to find out more, have a look on there. Going back to how Worcestershire compares to the national results, our private rental sector is a lot smaller. Unfortunately, it's at 13.9%. But this presents a huge potential to investors, developers or anyone considering build to rent schemes to help serve that local demand. Now the local market roundup. Land Registry are now able to provide statistics up to the end of October 2022. This is their normal three month lag. A similar picture to all previous roundups with fewer sales in Worcestershire compared to the bonkers year we had before. Average prices are still holding strong though with Malvern's average price sale at around 303. Droitwich is at 284,500 and Worcester at 247,500. Based on those numbers, Malvern's annual average growth remains highest at 9%. Worcester was up 7% and Droitwich up 4%. Over the last five years, those areas have seen significant growth, with Malvern again leading the way at 26%. Worcester closely following at 24% and Droitwich at 19%. Locally, when looking at average rents in the lettings market over the last 12 months, we've seen an increase of 8% on those that have been let. Rents in Droitwich actually sit 9% below the Worcestershire average. They're at £729 per calendar month. In Malvern, the average rent is actually 12.6% above the Worcestershire average at a whopping £886. The Worcestershire average is £801. They've seen a growth of 12% over the year. If you look at the ONS index, which includes pre-existing and new lets, they've said that rents in fact have risen by 4.2% in the year up to December, and that's up from 4% in November. Average rent in the UK is just over £1,000. Going back to info from the census, it told us that nationally the number of people living in private rented has grown in the last 10 years. In fact, it's grown by 1.1 million. All regions saw increases in the private rented sector from 2011 to 2021. They ranged from 2.6% increase to 4.9%, with our West Midlands PRS growing by 114,214 or 3.9%. So now the national market. There's been more mixed messages in the press about the market, so let's help clear some of them up. Firstly, in the press they were predicting big crashes of up to 10%, and the publications over the first two weeks were really hammering the market. Then a report came out from Rightmove saying that prices are on the way back up. We were quick to react to let you know that the Rightmove data was talking about asking prices of newly listed stock as they saw an increase of 0.9%. This isn't a barometer we would trust and every agent in the land wants new stock in 2023. So I think what's been happening is a few increased asking prices to get that. Truth is annual house price growth is starting to soften. Latest indices by Halifax and Nationwide have confirmed that whilst prices remain significantly higher than two years ago, we have seen some small month-on-month -month falls. Good news that the number of prospective buyers is actually up 4% versus 2019 and actually up 55% compared to two weeks before Christmas, but inquiries are down a third on last year. We've seen a similar reduction in our database from 1,600 registered applicants down to around 1,100. The average price paid by a first-time buyer if they can afford it is around 245000 and for a second stepper that has owned before, they're paying around £345,000. Now on to the economy. Inflation fell to 10.5% in the year to December from 107 in November. This was mainly due to easing fuel prices, but food prices remain at a 40-year high. Unexpectedly for many, the UK economy grew by 0.1% in November, with the World Cup helping to boost growth in tech and service sector industries. Wasn't all good news though, as GDP fell by 0.3% in the three months of November, according to the ONS. The International Money Fund are warning that a third of the global economy will face recession in 2023. Our economy is forecast to shrink by 1.4%, but expected to grow from 2024 to 2027, so good times to come. We'll remain consistent delivering you news on the market in your local area, because even if you aren't looking to buy, rent or sell, it's good to really understand what's happening. The press are doing their best to scare, but we'll always provide an honest take. If you think this will be a benefit to someone, please share it. And if you have any comments, please add them below. Until next time, take care.